Hello neighbors, my name is Christopher Henry and welcome back to the Noia Mountain Music teaching channel. Today we're going to be looking at Sweet Georgia Brown, which is a tune that gets called, you know, the Harlem Globetrotters used to use it, I remember they still do, as our theme song. Let me whistle. So on and so forth. And we're going to be looking at it in the context of being able to use simple and improvisational jamming devices. We're going to start with a simple arpeggio improv device, which has been taught on this channel. And put a little link on there. If you want to go check that out, if you don't know it already, that's kind of the way that we build the teaching on this channel, introduce devices and then show you what to do with them. So the whole idea is we're doing this workshop, which is about sold out, and it's going to be on jamming beyond one, four, and five, all right? The most important thing is to know the chord progression, which is a little bit tricky. This is what you might think about as a six, two, five, one kind of chord progression. It's in the key of F, a little bit different key than usual G, C, D, A kind of thing, all right? So it's important, we're just gonna go ahead and assume that you know the chord progression, but if you don't, we'll just give you a little, you know, guidance on that. And we will aim to do that right after this. I was lucky enough to be hanging out with the rising superstar Wyatt Ellis, in Asheville this weekend, and I got him to help me talk about his approach to Sweet Georgia Brown jamming, and so let's check that out a little bit here. So we're happy to have Mr. Wyatt Ellis here with us to help us understand how to get past the old one, four, and five a little bit on a tune called the old Sweet Georgia Brown. And uh, so Wyatt, what are your thoughts when you think about approaching a tune like this, you know, with regard to, so it's a tune that you already know the melody for, so you kind of got the game in hand right there. But if you, you know, I know this is a, a very a little bit abstract of a hypothetical, but say you didn't know the melody, but you knew the chord structure, what okay. would your approach be like? So I would have to, you know, really know the chord structure. And that's, this is one of the first tunes that I learned. It was kind of out of the bluegrass box, mm -hmm. you know, strip, strip bluegrass box. This is one of the first tunes I ever learned, you know, that had this many chords. Mm -hmm. And I think my approach to it was just knowing the chord structure by heart. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part to playing a tune like How'd this. How did you learn the chords? That well, was you it was something that I, um, you know, just kind of played over and over again mm -hmm. until I got it, you know. So you're talking about like in jam sessions, you would like just play the chords and eventually yeah, try and just, different you know, ones until you try different it ones, yeah, until I figured mm -hmm. it out. Kind of, you know, searching for it, and that's okay to do sometimes. Yeah. Now, when you think about a, a chord structure like this, do you feel like you have some kind of usual tricks that help you navigate like this? Because some people might think about it as like a one, six, two, five kind of deal. Do you think about it that way, or do you think about it another way? You know, I sometimes think about it that way. But, you know, this is a tune that, you know, it's in the key of F, but it starts out in D. So that's your sixth chord, yeah. right? Yeah, uh -huh. starts out in the sixth chord. Yeah, I kind of would think about, about it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of the six, two, one, five. And that's kind of a, yeah. a little bit of a, a, common a common chord progression beyond your regular one, it four, is, yeah. fives. Yeah, so if you didn't know the melody, what would you do? Well, so, you know, I would just kind of play over the six two one five in a way that was kind of melodic okay and i would kind of try to peck out what i was hearing uh -huh. around me and get as close to that as i could uh -huh. and still you know try to create a melodic break over that chord structure so you're hearing a little note or two here and there that you can try to grab yeah in the chords exactly Okay, cool. So if you're if you watched the last video, we've been using like the simple arpeggio lick to get around with our chords a good bit. So once again, you've got to know the chord progression. So uh, what do you say? Let's play it through a few times. Yeah. And so you could you can start and maybe you play the melody, and then I'll kind of like pretend like I don't know the the melody. Awesome. Which I don't know it exactly, but uh, <laughs> I know it well enough. It's like not one of those ones that I've really studied, but after you play it for, if you play at it a little bit for, you know, 20 years, kind of, you, you, you can get a you, pretty good idea. You can get a pretty good idea on it. So I'm going to be doing the real simple arpeggio improv lick, this one, you know. And you know what? You can reverse it. So it might even bust a little reversal out or something. Uh -huh. 
And uh, so the tricky part comes when the chords start to bounce a little bit quicker. Um, but let's we'll just see what happens. And so uh, you know, we'll play it like maybe three times through. Why don't I start with the melody and then I'll do the real simple improv lick through the whole thing. And then you do whatever you want to yeah. do. And then maybe for my second break, I might do like uh, staggered arpeggios and slidey licks. Uh, and then maybe also on the third break, I'll try to throw in some melody in there and just kind of put it all together. Or maybe alternate between the, we'll figure it out. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. But before we do, please, please like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Go ahead and hit that little bell there from the notifications and you'll get all the good stuff from Noy Mountain Music. Thank you. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Noya Mountain Music. So, Remember melodies. Yeah. One, two, three, four. As you can see, you don't really need to know the melody like completely all the way through to be able to play something as you like to say sometimes serviceably. You can get through on your slidey licks and your uh, staggered arpeggios. And also, one of the cool things about just having that in your back pocket is that you know if everybody else is playing the melody, then you can kind of do something different and that can be a good creative contrast. Any more thoughts you want to share on your approach or how you think about it? 
yeah, so, you know, it's just kind of one of those tunes that you have to kind of listen to and peck around at for 20 years, which I haven't done yet. Yeah, the pecking, so, you know, the, yeah. the packing is just such an important process that we need to get better at because the more we're trying it yes you know it's a little bit like hot stove like you hit a note that's wrong like, oh not there and then you just learn to not hit that note but you kind of got to make all the mistakes in the world just about before you uh can you know, stop making them yeah you know, on a regular basis and i made those yeah well these are the the gates through and i learned from it players pass that's right yeah well thank you for joining us here thank you for having me segment and uh, we'll move on and talk about something else here. Yeah. It's in the key of F. All right, and the melody kind of walks down from the F. So you don't necessarily need to know the melody for this teaching video to be potentially helpful. But it's good if you do. Um, so it's walking down from the F note, da, 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 walking down to the open D. All right, starting on the third fret of the D, walking down to the open D. And what's happening there chromatically is that's the one note there the f and then you got the e note you got the e flat note down to the d so the d note in the key of f one two three four oops one two three four five six it's the sixth note okay so the relationship between the f and the d is going to be from the one f to the six okay that's the interval position in the scale of D of F. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Usually you don't use the uh yeah the uh the B note it's the it's the B flat. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the six of F. And then we're gonna go to the two of F, which is G, and then to the five of F, which is C, and then back to the, the one. Alright, so it's walking down from the F da, 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 to the six. And it hangs out for their little loud. Do, 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 then to the two. Do, 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 and then hits that little E there before it swings around again. And so the second time, it goes from the six to the two, but then it comes back to the, the six, but this time it's gonna be the minor D, okay? So that little part with the melody goes And it goes from D minor, D minor to A7, back to the D minor, the A7, and it walks down chromatically from the F, A7. to the two, G, and then it resolves in the five, C, and then back to the one. Okay, so that's the chord progression, and we're going to look at the simple arpeggio improv device, which is this one. As a starting place. So if you don't know that, go pick up that. Here's the video. Okay, so we've got two bars in D. So we can play that simple improv arpeggio over the first one bottom of the top, and then you might think about reversing it. And then you can go to G, do that same thing. Come up to C, do the same thing. And then here you can come up into your three finger F chop chord and do that in F. And then you can do a little different thing. You can kind of modulate that device, just go through the arpeggio. And then come down to E and do it just like that. So those are going to be two beats. One and two and three and four and. You can even do bottom to top and F and then top to the bottom and E for a little variety. Okay, so then back into the D chord. Same thing. Same thing in G. And then when it comes to the D minor, you can kind of do that same thing we did over F and E in D minor and A. But instead of you know, playing the whole four beat simple improv uh, arpeggio device, you can just go through the arpeggio. It's gonna be a minor D chord this time, which is gonna be with your third fret of the D with your first finger instead of the fourth fret, you're like your regular D chop chord. 
minor D chop chord. Just go through the arpeggio. Go through the arpeggio in A. You can even use that flat seven if you want to. Third fret of the E instead of the fifth fret of the E. And then back to D minor. Back to A or A7. And then you can walk down like that. Just use your first two notes of the arpeggio out of the chord in F. First two notes in E. First two notes in E flat. And first two notes in D. And then you can kind of do the same thing in, uh, in G and C. And end up in your two finger F chord. All right, so let's play through that whole thing. Here we go one, two, from the top. your upstroke there through that last passage, you know. Or you just kind of do a little trim on. Which is pretty convenient to just use that same pattern, just use an upstroke or a little tremolo breast stroke to fill it out for more texture. Okay, so now let's put one of the Monroe devices in there. Let's work on our slidey lick, okay? So same chord progression, of course, starting in D, slidey lick. If you don't know that, here's the link for it. We're building on all the other teaching videos here. All right, so in the key of D, or the chord of D, in the key of F, it's the sixth chord of F. So here we go with the slidey lick. One, two, slidey in D. Again. Up to G. Two times. Up to C. And F. So what do we do there? So we did the front half of slidey in F and the back half in E. So you can do that for the whole, you know, next part too. Fast forward. And we can do that minor slidey. And you know, instead of sliding up into the major third, in the D chord, you're sliding into the minor third, which is the third fret of the D. Okay. So with that, again, you can use your sl split bar slidey front half in D, back half in A. Again. So at this point, we can't really do the split bar slidey over the one beat walk down from F to D. So we gotta do something else. You know, you could easily do your two finger, you know, chord. Something like that, or just bang over the whole three finger chord. Perfectly fine. You could do kind of the, the more uh, single note. When you do that, you can add the stagger technique in there where you're moving on the upstroke. Which is a nice texture too. Okay, so now let's move on to staggered arpeggios, staggered sixteenth notes through the same chord form. All right. This is a really powerful practice that I encourage everyone to get really comfortable doing. Okay, so again, starting in D. And that might be, well, what are you doing there? So this is the staggered arpeggio, which you can check that link out if you want to learn how to do that. It's a very powerful Monroe style device. And again, you can mirror it. You can come from the bottom or go from the top. So let's go from the bottom. All right, coming up to the fifth fret of the E and then back down. You can go up to the top if you want to. whatever you want there. This is a place where you can really engage with your own creative sensibilities. All right, but however you do it, you know, just make sure there's two full bars of it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and go to 
G, same thing. C. You come back up to your F. Okay, so you hit that little uh, split bar between F and E there. Back into your D. And you do slidey, you can alternate these devices if you want to. So if you wanted to play a slidey first and then go into your staggered 16th notes, that's cool. So we're really kind of, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road with these devices, okay? And you can alternate that. You can start off with your staggered 16th notes. Slide it. These are great devices. I've been playing them for 30 years and still enjoy them a whole lot. All right. So, how do we handle the D minor to A7? You know, just like that, you could alternate the devices, start with the stagger, and then go into the slide eight. front half or back half, either way. You could do the slidey in D and then the staggered in A. All right, then the same kind of walk down. What was going on there? You know, kind of going from the 31 double stop to your 51. Going to your 31 there. Little two finger F out of your chalkboard. Your 51, you can reverse that, go from your 51 to your 31 and E. Keep reversing it. Go from your 13 to your 51. Hit a little piece of that 31 on the way up. 51 down through 31, down to 13, and then in an F. All right, so that's probably a lot, especially folks who are not as familiar with the devices. But this is, again, the whole point of this is if you don't know the melody, then you can get around the chord changes really nicely using the devices. Starting with your simple, you know, arpeggio. Going to the slide in. Mixing with the match. That was a little infinity shape. infinity through the whole thing. Infinite creative possibilities there. Thank you for checking out this video. If you like what's happening here, please like and subscribe. Leave a little comment. Tell us what you're into and all that. That helps us get the video out there so we can do more teaching videos on the Noia Mountain Music channel. And big thanks to all the Patreon supporters. That's really the community that is supporting this work the most. And would like to encourage all of y'all to consider becoming a Noia Mountain Music Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash Noia Mountain Music. And yeah, hope you all are having a beautiful day and I hope this has helped a little bit and we'll see you on the next one.